Hello, Esper Girls. It's been a while since we spoke. As most of you know, I'm back in New York at my house, trying to get rid of it. Um, but I've got some family staying here with me, which is pretty time consuming. And of course, I've been finishing Sex in the Single Aspie, which is done. Uh, at least the first draft is done. Many of you have read it already on Patreon. Thank you for that. And um, most of you know that JKP has kindly offered to publish it. So I think it will be out this coming year, 2018, in a slightly different form than it, than it is on Patreon, because, of course, Jessica will give her um, expertise in, uh, you know, like a good editor does, and sculpt it into its final form. But I'm really, as I said on Facebook today, I'm really proud and pleased to have written this book because I think it is probably the first sexually explicit book, um, not only for women on the spectrum, but for thinking women, intelligent women, sensitive women, you know, everywhere. So hopefully it will break a little bit past the barriers of the title. I wanted to call it something different, but Jessica very rightfully said that, you know, it needs to be about spectrum women first and foremost. Um, speaking of which, I keep saying Spectrum Women instead of Asper Girls because that's the title of my good friend Babs Cook's new book. Many uh, Asper Girls Society members are contributors to that book as well. So that's also coming out in 2018, I believe, and I think it's going to be great. Um, they're going to be talking about all aspects of life on the spectrum. I, as usual, will be going off on um, tangents. Um, I, For me... I tend now, because I've written so many books about being on the spectrum, I tend to go off into areas that other people don't touch on quite so much. So, you know, one thing that's been really on my mind lately is is gender, gender issues. You know, we all know Asper girls don't care about gender so much. When we're small children, we don't really think about gender. We think gender is fluid and yeah, at best and stupid, you know, at worst. And, you know, it isn't until puberty that we really start to see the differences in behaviors of, of our friends and we're, we're sort of lost, you know, adrift at sea going, you know, what's happening with people. But what does happen with people is that um, they do go off into different gender territory and they adopt a lot of behaviors, whether intrinsically and naturally. They come with that territory or they adapt them uh, from their, their friends, from their, you know, compatriots, their colleagues, their whatever. Um, contemporaries. So we are left sort of, you know, intrinsically not caring about gender, but being forced to deal with it. So one thing I've noticed in the writing of this book through dating so many, mostly neurotypical men, not all, uh, mostly younger men, mostly Europeans and Middle Easterns, a few Americans, um, so you know, pretty good, pretty good range there. Um, is that there is a sense of entitlement among among men, whether they're men on the spectrum or, or neurotypical men. Men naturally have a stronger sense of entitlement. And once you make it sort of like your area of interest, like when I'm writing a book, all of a sudden anything to do with that subject becomes uh, comes into focus. So, for example, a conversation between a man and a woman that I wouldn't have noticed anything about you know, at another time, because I've been writing this book, I see all the nuances of gender. I see all the influences of the way we are raised, the way we are conditioned, um, impacting and forming the words that come out in these conversations. Now, you've also got, you know, you've got mental health issues, you've got cultural issues, you've got, you know, how you were raised in your family, if you, if you were raised with good, strong, healthy, happy role models, or whether you were raised in a house that was sort of, you know, you know mindless or old-fashioned or whatever. So we are all products of our environment, and we are also all products of our, of our genetics and of our inherent nature, of our, our souls, if you will, because, you know, many of us believe that we have sort of like a destiny and a, and a personality that kind of comes, you know, with us when we're born. So as I've been writing this book, when I see an exchange between a man and a woman, whether it's between me and a man or between two other people, I, I really now see the incredible, incredible difference between... Uh, males and females. When a woman wants something from a man, let's say, she has to say, honey, do you mind? She's got to be like a world-class diplomat so that this man doesn't feel like he's being nagged, so that he doesn't feel like he's being talked down to, so that he doesn't feel like he's being, um, you know, mothered by this woman. 
But if a man wants something from a woman, he just says, do it, you know, and, and kind of just expects her to um, do it. And if he says please or thank you, you know, it's almost like they, they kind of want a gold medal. Now, I'm sorry to generalize, but I know so many of you, so many of you, even, <clears throat> excuse me, even the ones with really good relationships, even the ones that are very much in love and have helpful um, partners, you still come to me and tell me that these kinds of things do go on. And now, they're not in and of themselves really, really terrible. But I think that we do our daughters and, and our sons no service if we don't begin to take notice of these things and if we don't begin to do something about it. We've all seen the burgeoning awareness with the Me Too campaign of, of sexual abuse. But that's only one, one tiny, tiny, tiny facet of this, of this, uh, say diamond, but you know, of this thing, um, which is multi, multifaceted. That's only one manifestation of their sense of entitlement. What's really interesting to me too is that um, one person who was just accused of sexual harassment took a, a lie, apparently took a lie detector test and passed. And I kind of don't doubt that because I think that when, when um, men do these kinds of things, I don't think they realize they're doing it. I think that they really think they're being fair. They really think they're being, you know, equal, equal, equal people, egalitarian. When, you know, these sexual molesters do this, they really think the other person is as into them as they are into them. So I think this whole theory of mind business that's attributed to um, people with Asperger's and women with Asperger's, I think it's just rampant. You know, I think, <laughs> I think um, it's, it's rampant among men. They don't understand that their behavior is not on a par with our behavior. And I've said this before, like, yeah, if we were all cavemen still and they had to go out and hit a mastodon over the head with a club and drag it home, you know, then yeah, this kind of um, macho behavior might, might be, you know, make sense. But it no longer makes sense in today's world. So I guess my suggestion is to just, well, you know me, I always have to give, to give suggestions, right? Whether I'm masked or not. But just observe your exchanges with men, uh, boys, men, you know, ones you're married to, ones you're living with, ones you meet on the street, and just notice the difference. You don't have to judge it. You don't have to say, oh, he's talking down to me, or oh, that's sexual harassment. You know, we, we don't want to be too quick to judge things and label them as negative. But just begin to observe the differences in behavior, and you will see the subtle manifestations of this inequality a million times a day and then you will have to pick your battles wisely and diplomatically because otherwise your life will become a living hell your life will start to resemble mine which is constantly being at loggerheads with everyone <laughs> we don't want that um, you have to uh, maybe just begin to shift the tide a little bit and say I'm you know for example someone jokingly laughingly called me a cougar and it wasn't meant to be hurtful. And I just said, no, I'm not going to allow that because that is a very inherently sexist and ageist comment. So, you know, I wasn't like all militant and freaky about it, but I was, I was firm about it. And they've been very respectful and haven't called me that since. So, you know, I'm just saying like, observe the exchanges in your life. And if you do see um, men, you know, questioning you, I once had a plumber in my house because I had a problem with my plumbing. And I wanted to know for when he was gone, which lever opened the water into the water tank and which one was for something else. And he kind of went, oh, 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 well, little lady. And I just went, no, no, that's not going to fly. I said, I don't, I'm not a plumber, so therefore it's not my job to know. But I'm asking you because I need to know once you're gone. I said, I'll tell you what, I won't make fun of you for not writing books, music, and being funny. Uh, if you don't laugh at me for not knowing plumbing. <laughs> so he was stunned and told me what the levers were for and then never came back, of course. Um, you know, you will possibly lose friends, but were they really friends or were they people that you placated by being somewhat submissive? I mean, I hate to say that, um, but you know, that's something I think, I think what happened with me because I was violently assaulted, as most of you know, almost two years ago by somebody I loved and I did my best to placate, I did my best to care for, it really made me realize that being submissive is not going to protect you. It's not going to protect you. Um, you know, those who uh, don't wield a sword can still die on one, to quote Lord of the Rings. I still have to slip those in every now and then. So, you know, just because you're passive and submissive and kind and nurturing, 
it's not going to make this man treat you any better when when it comes down to it so I think it's good to really be firm and to train and to teach your sons the same thing you know I mean I call my little Amasan my prince and stuff like that but if I had a girl I would call her my princess and I do call my daughter my princess so it's you know we can treat people we love like royalty but we have to let them know that you know it's not a gender thing you know that one gender is not more entitled than the other so I know you 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 know all this but I think sometimes it helps to be reminded because we all have we all suffer oppression at times and if you do choose to speak up to someone who's used to treating you in a certain way there is going to be a period of instability there's going to be a period of change there's going to be a period of resentment but I think if that person really is um, you know the kind and wise person that you hope they would be then eventually they will come around and and they will see you know the the error of their ways and the wisdom in your words so I guess that's all I want to say for now so thank you um, I've taken down the usual renew your membership things on the site because I want everybody to renew through Patreon for three dollars a month I'm sorry it's a little inconvenient but I have my reasons for doing it which I won't go into but with Patreon you will get the new book and I also have another manuscript which um, as soon as I'm done with these rewrites I'm gonna polish up this other manuscript and publish it it's a novel and um, I'm gonna make another music video hopefully in hopefully in Greece this time because I haven't done one in Greece yet. I did one in France one in Italy watch them if you haven't yet they're gorgeous and um, hopefully I'll do one in Greece this winter and get a film of my play which which was went down a treat in September in Athens so uh, that's all for now I do have some workshops coming up in Rome and I have a keynote speech to give in Copenhagen Denmark if if uh, we can iron out the last few kinks and that's all this year you want me to come speak near you hey you know just get on it call your local conference organizers and see what we can do okay ciao for now ladies see you soon